Hello everyone and welcome back to Brown Coat Reviews. I'm your host Laura. Now we are in the middle of our 30 day challenge which is 30 videos in 30 days so please make sure to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss any of the amazing content that is coming such as today's amazing video where I have a guest. Now this is not just any guest. This is the infamous, the ever spectacular husband who I have talked about in many, many videos and given him credit for being the one who got me started into comic books. Technically, he is the reason that I bought my very first comic book and the reason that we have so many comic books now. It's this like over 2,000, but that was yesterday, the last time I checked, and she's already bought some today, so. I can't help it. So this is, of course, Scott, and we are going to talk about his amazing adventures at Ollie's. Now, I do have an upcoming video where I'm going to do sort of a tour around town and take a look at the three different Ollie locations in my area. However, Scott was on a trip to go see family and found an Ollie's in that area, which was amazing. So he shot some footage for me because I was begging him to do it. And I wanted to get your sort of impressions of Ollie's and then we're going to do some unboxing and show you what he grabbed. Do you know how hard it has been to not open Saran Wrap and any of the content that he purchased several days ago? So I am dying with anticipation, but I have been waiting impatiently just for you guys. Very hard. You ready to see the fun stuff? So tell me, where was this Ollie's location? In Ocala, Florida, close to I-75 off of State Route 200. Now, what were your original impressions of Ollie's? Because I think this is the first one you've been in. It was. Uh, at first, I thought it was similar to Big Lots. Was it really well organized? Did you find a lot of content? The store itself was a little bit disorganized, um, but the sections were all clearly marked. As you can see in the video here, there's huge signs everywhere. So if you kind of know what, to, what you're looking for, you can get in the general area and then hunt and peck in the aisles to find it. This was right up front, so it was pretty easy, right as you walked in the door. And for the Ollie's, of course, we've got walls and walls of comic books. Was it sort of the same stuff over and over again, you know, the deeper you got, or was it sort of hunt and peck for the gold? So the one thing I will say about it being organized or disorganized, the individual shelves were not very well organized, and you did run into, like, multiple uh, copies of the same book on this shelf and then you go over to the next section and there'd be five more copies of it but they had a few things kind of separated and they were a little bit easier to spot just because they stood up on the shelf the shelves were very deep though i will say that so if you saw something in the front and didn't dig all the way through to the back you were very likely going to miss something now you mentioned that there was like a, a Marvel comic, but it kind of like went all the way to the back. So it sounds like some things even like fall off the back end of the shelves as well. They did. And um, one of the books that I actually wanted to get, but I could only find one copy of it, had apparently fallen through the back of the shelf and had basically torn the entire back uh, slip cover um, and the book itself. So I, I left it there. You can see here though how deep this uh, one little section on one shelf gets. Um, there's multiple individual trades on this one particular section, so not a lot of repeats. Uh, I think one of the other groups that I show you in the next video um, clip, you see that there are multiple copies of the same thing. See there, there's more than one or two of them. but. Um, the good thing about it being that deep is that you could kind of flip through it without um, anything falling off the shelf. You know, it's because they were so deep and they got a little lip on them. So it's kind of easy to go through. It wasn't like digging through a lawn box, um, but it was definitely easier than uh, some places I've been where it feels like if you go too far back, everything starts to fall into the floor. And I get self-conscious and like stop because I'm sick of picking up books out of the floor. So... But you can see how deep this one's going. I mean, that's a pretty thick stack I've already flipped through. And I'm not at the back yet. So this was my favorite section because it was the five uh, comics, sometimes ten, but a lot of five packs. And they're bagged in these big poly bags for five bucks. Um, you can only see the, you know, the front uh, section and then the one on the back, they, they turn around so you can see it. 
if you really tried, like you did when I brought it home, yeah, you can I kind did. of move, maneuver it around and see the stuff in the middle. But for this one, um, I like going through this section because, like I said, they were kind of all together. And I could see front and back and kind of determine from that, like, did I want to dig more? And I didn't see a lot of repeats in this section, I will say. Now, I've heard some people mention that those five comic book sections, like, they're... It almost looks like the comic books are really beaten up, but it doesn't look like it at this shop. I gotta say, out of this group of um, five packs that I went through, I didn't see any that were really rough. Now, I don't know if that was unusual for this location. Uh, this is me showing you the, the haul once I got back into the uh, parking lot, back in the car. Um, that entire bag there was less than 50 bucks. So, yeah. um, and I'm sure we're going to show it We're going to get later. into it soon. So I guess before we actually get into um, the, the goodies, the big question is, would you go back to this particular Ollie's location, or did you feel oh, like definitely. you grabbed everything you needed? No. I, I, I honestly, I had a little bit of a time limit, um, and I could have doubled that easily and still not probably gone through all of it, or at least not gone through it as closely as I would want it to. Um, I was there all together for only maybe an hour. Oh, that's um, not and even then, like I didn't spend a full hour in just the comic book section. So like if I spent 45 minutes there, I don't think I touched maybe half. I don't, I don't even think I touched half. Okay. So the challenge that I gave my husband when he was there, because um, he was aware that I was going to be going to Ollie's soon, um, but I hadn't <laughs> actually told him what I planned for the upcoming videos because I didn't think he was going to find an Ollie's when he was down in Ocala. What I told him is, I want you to do a $25 challenge and show me what you can purchase for $25 at Ollie's just to get an idea in our heads for bargain shoppers. Now, he was very, very smart and a little bit sly and purchased a $25 purchase as if he was purchasing and then did a $25 purchase as though I was purchasing. So which one do you want to show first? Uh, let's show yours, ladies first. Well, actually, you got to give the description on what you grabbed because you grabbed on my behalf. I didn't actually get a single vote on this, which he did pick well, so don't worry. Well, that's not true. I did send you some pictures and some snapshots that's and some true. questions via text. That so, is true. Um, as far as what I grabbed for the Laura pick, it was... Drinking out um, Because Laura is very much into collecting, if you hadn't noticed, uh, and definitely more kind of interested in the... Um, what I would call like the rarer finds or the uh, mystery boxes and that kind of stuff. Like, ooh, what am I going to get when I open it? So I spent basically $25 on five packs. So each one of these has got five individual comments. On the front, you'll see that it actually says collector five pack. And they're supposed to be original comics from the 70s to the present from Marvel and DC only. Okay, They did have a couple of 10 packs there. Uh, they were a little bit more. These were five bucks. I want to say they were, yeah, six ninety nine. Um, they were basically the same thing though. Uh, and out of these, like I was saying before, you can see the front, and you can see one on the back, and then you've got the ones in the middle there that you kind of have to guess at or try and see what's up. I did manage to look and see on the barcode section if I was getting actual first prints. Mm -hmm. um, and on, I think, all the ones that I picked for you, yeah. I did actually get first prints. I am uh, more artistic, so even though these were Laura's picks for her $25, I still use some of my bases for getting stuff. Sometimes it's not just about value for me, it's about art or artwork. I love Jim Lee. I saw this cover. I didn't care what book it was on. I wanted it. So I picked this five pack because of that cover. Um, some of them, though, I did get because I was thinking, oh, look, that might actually be worth something. I'm not sure. I grabbed a few, like this one, in hopes that we would uh, be able to determine in a that first printing of the Black Panther in that pack. Like I said, though, we haven't actually opened them. This one was a True Believers um, on one side, and then I really like that on the back, the Dark Knight. So that was Laura's pick. Which one do you want to do first? 
Pick one. It's like Christmas. It is. I'm dying. Let's do that one. Bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Okay. So we have Excalibur. It is after Xavier, the Age of Apocalypse. So this was the one that you could see from the outside of the bag. We have Mystery in Space with Captain Comet, which is issue number three of eight. It's actually a cool cover. The Ultimate Fantastic Four, issue 17. The Eternals, issue number five in a 12 issue limited series. Ooh, that's actually cool. So for Eternals, I've read the Neil Gaiman version because it's Neil Gaiman. Um, I have not read the original Jack Kirby. It's on my list, though. And then this is Superman in Action Comics, issue number 695. This is in the 80s. Yeah, it should be Jack Kirby. And Superman has a very interesting hairdo on this one. But it also, in this one, has Lobo on one page. But check out the hairstyle. Not very classic Clark Kent. <laughs> it's Clark in his Fabio days. Definitely. Next. Next one. Okay. We have Batman Legends of the Dark Knight, Don't Blink, which is... Part four of four. Batman saving a little girl. Mm -hmm. Supergirl, issue number 54. Oh, that's cool. Statue at Liberty, guest starring the Green Lantern. Here you go, Keith. The Outsiders, uh, issue number 24. The Wanderers, issue number 12. Interesting. I was going to ask the same thing. I don't know who the artist is, but I recognize the stamp. Um, and this is True Believers issue, or True Believers number one, and it's the other Hulks. And do you remember the story behind the True Believers? Uh, it's like a, a reprint or a redo of... Of the original Those cover, original, I yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, you can grab the next one there. I just was trying to see if they had... Uh, so this is this the... This is pretty cool. So you were talking about condition earlier. This is an older one, but you can still see here, and you'll show it better in later, I'm sure, up close, the quality of the paper and the ink. It's the old timey. Yeah. Like, this is definitely taking me way back. And yeah, there's yellowing on the edges of the pages. But as far as the quality of it and the print and the ink itself, it's still pretty impressive. I don't it's know. It's good shape. I would never venture to guess a grade, but for a dollar, yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar. And this is the Jim Lee um, Justice League number one yes. Scott Snyder issue or nice. Scott Snyder run. Um, I agree with Scott. It's gorgeous. I like Jim Lee. Uh, Civil War two. So this is Uncanny Inhumans number twelve. So definitely a unique cover. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Gotcha, Sliding comic books. Gotham Academy number one. That's actually one I've been wanting to pick up. The Punisher 2099. Um, this is the public enemy. Dun dun dun, issue 17. And I want to say I was hearing someone talk about the Punisher 2099 run just this last week. So, very cool. And this is another Punisher 2099, issue 11. With Jigsaw goes to pieces. Dun dun dun. Really cool cover on that one. Red Robin vs. the Black Bat. 
That is a cool cover. I agree. Yeah, you got Ryan Reynolds on the back. Well, of course, who doesn't want Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern? <laughs> Probably Ryan Reynolds. But yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> uh, the New Warriors. Uh, son versus Father. The Fury of Marvel Boy. Dun, dun, dun. Checkmate. 30th anniversary. Issue number five. Interesting. And it's got the V is for Vendetta ad on the back. Gotta love it. Blue Beetle. Um, da, 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 da. Face off. Dun. I'm already losing in the comic books. No, I'm still with you. <laughs> um, sort of. Uncanny X-Men issue number five with one of the Brian Bendis runs. And Jelliot, just for you, it's a Captain America ad on the back. All right. So we have Black Panther number one. It's a gorgeous cover. Another Outsiders, issue number eight. Ravage, twenty ninety nine, with Madness Unleashed. Justice League of America, issue number 124, Envy is the Key. A World Without a Justice League, JLA. And the last one is... Yeah. It's your morning cartoon. Yeah, it is. Um, X-Men, the world's greatest comics. Yay! Who or what is Jack Knife? This was the issue that Scott was talking about. Okay. So those were the mysterious Laura grabs. What were the Scott finds? So I looked at it a little differently. I'm less about the collecting, unless, like I said, it's something that's pretty or Arcus I follow or a key issue or something like that. Um, so I do like reading a lot though, and to me, unless it's something that every single cover has a significance, like the Alex Ross run, mm -hmm. or some of the new detective comics where I just like every single issue that comes out, it seems like I want to buy it for the cover alone, not even subscribe to it, sorry Dan, but I keep buying the individuals. Um, for me, I look at buying the whole story, so like I, I like getting trades, um, I let the, the run come out. I'll buy the trade, that way I can read through four, six, ten, twelve, however many volumes at a time. When I was in Ollie's, they had a lot of trades. They also had some other stuff that I'm going to show you. But I did grab Superman Unchained because why not? And? And actually because of Scott Snyder and Jim Lee. Yes. And then I also grabbed Batman Volume 9. And these are both hardcovers. Uh, this is a series that Laura and I both are reading. We're both interested in. We're kind of backing up from the wedding. This one includes the wedding. Yes. Uh, we started collecting wedding covers, issue 50. But I'm really, really curious about the storyline as it progresses from there through um, City of Bane and on into Dark Design, etc. So, yes. or the designer. The other things, though, that I got were kind of um, definitely more of a Scottish find. Scott being me, not Scottish as in from Scotland, although that's also true. But this is a reference book, really. It's Batman 100 Greatest Moments. I bought this because it includes, you know, little excerpts from different storylines. It has um, different covers and artwork, key events, um, key dates and times, you know, main characters, stuff like that. So I thought this was really cool mm -hmm. because it kind of serves two purposes. Number one, 
There's probably stuff in here that I've seen somewhere as we've been digging through long boxes or walking through shops or looking and I either recognized it but wasn't sure what it was or had no clue what it was. I can find it in here and then if it's something that I'm really interested in, I'll go back and grab it now. Or there's stuff that I've seen in some of the movies and I'm like, I know I should know that key character at the end of that hidden scene at the end of the credits, but I don't know if it's this guy or this guy. Well, something like that or this which is another reference book, Justice League. So this is their ultimate guide. This will give me an idea of who that guy was at the end credits. For example, um, characters, sorry, that I'm not as familiar with. I know a little bit about Green Lantern, but not nearly enough. Um, stuff like early versions. So it's kind of like a little bit of a history as well as a um, everybody's favorite separage aquaman yeah so stuff going on in here that um kind of ties some stuff together for me gives me some clues um dark side all right okay mm -hmm. um and i can come back to if i see something i'm not sure about or going through this when i'm in the shop the next time i might find something that i'm like ah, i know exactly what that is now so this of course i said all met the $25 per person challenge. Um, and then you snuck in a little extra one. Well, I did. So on my first trip to Ollie's, um, before I had actually talked to Laura about doing the video um, and making sure she wanted me to do a video, I went into the store just to see one and walking through the book section found like a ton of stuff that, again, I wanted to buy right away. But I grabbed this because um, I was interested in the artwork. It's a coffee table book that was in that section. So it's the Art of Sealing. Let me see that there. He's a science fiction fantasy um, artist. And I had seen some of his work, I'm pretty sure, at one of the conventions that we went to. And because it was a kind of tie in to a lot of the other stuff going on, you know, the Comic Con is a great place for him to set up the booth. Basically, um, the book itself, I paid. So here's the Scottish part of the Scott Logic. I paid a whopping total of uh, ten dollars for a fifty dollar book. Yeah. So I couldn't pass it up at that kind of a price. And. I made him wait to open this thing until the video, so then we could at least kind of get an idea of what the rest of the artwork was like. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's not cool at all. So part of this reminds me of stuff that I used to want to sketch when I was bored out of my mind in school, right? Like giant robots rampaging through a city. I just never was at this level, of course. That's kind of cool. It shows some progressions he made from black and white sketches and coloring. But yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be one of those things where I read and then <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's neat. And then the next time that I'm someplace where he happens to be i'll see if i can get him to sign it for me it's pretty which we did meet aunt lucia over at um the last Go super mom chills. exactly mom chills. um and had him sign our artwork of aunt lucia which was really really cool and we got some um, original art prints that you'll see around halloween some cool landscapes in there as well yeah this will be nice. So now that we've lost him to his art book because yeah. I finally opened it. <laughs> oh, come on now. Come on. Tell me that's not bad. That's badass. So the big question for you while you're looking is would you go to Ollie's and get again and get the same type of things or would you be looking more for the art art books or just whatever's there and carry on. I take it on a store by store basis. So like they didn't have as many coffee table books I was interested in at this location. 
but I would check that section at the next one I went into for sure and see um, because if they did have some other stuff uh, we were looking for some things for Chris that yes. wasn't, they, I wasn't able to find um, I would definitely be interested because again the prices I mean it's a $50 book and it's $10 um, the other thing I would say is I would definitely take a look at the comic section for more five packs but after opening all of those like I I definitely would take more time and look through them a little closer and I also I would look at certain trades because even the ones that I saw that there were like multiple copies of I just happened to already either we had them yeah. or it wasn't a series we were interested in or there was a reason why I wasn't really excited about them but I would think it would be worth checking at any store that I went into from now on to just see what they had on the shelf because you never know what you might find and Again, even on the trades for the price, you can't beat it. Definitely. Sorry to all the LCSs out there. Still definitely would give you my um, support on a weekly basis, and, and I'm in there all the time anyhow. So this isn't going to become like a weekly thing for me where I'm going to Ollie's instead of buying them at my local shop. Um, but it is something that I might use to fill in gaps on older stuff or stuff that's just harder to come by through my local shop. It's yeah. also some place that I would, like I said, I go, depends on how often they turn over their inventory, but if it's once Not a month, that often. once every three months, you know, three times a year, um, I go in and check it out just to see art books and hard copies, uh, hard covers of stuff that may not be at my LCS. I agree. And I think from what everyone else has been saying about Ollie's is it seems like it's the same thing, but I will be checking out our local Ollie's and comparing and seeing if any of these things are even at those locations, let alone what new content they have. I will say just glancing at his videos versus my brief kind of glimpse inside the Raleigh location, your location was definitely much more full of comic books. You had an actual wall dedicated to it and in the Raleigh location it was a much 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 smaller section. So I'm hoping the other two locations will have a bit more to offer. So this has been our Ollie's trip and our finds. So the big questions are, you know, which one would you purchase? Would you gamble on the five packs? Would you be more interested in sort of the reference art books or would you be grabbing sort of a random trade of a series that you haven't had a chance to read yet? Let me know down in the comments and keep checking back in because the other Ollie's video is coming soon. And don't forget to subscribe. And thank you so much for tuning in. This is Laura and Scott from Brown Coat Reviews. And you'll be seeing us both again very soon.